This is a print by Marc Chagall, and it's titled The Paris Sun. In this piece, we have uh, cool colors, that is, the, all of the blues in here are what we would call cool colors, and really warm colors, the vibrant red and the vibrant yellow. And the red colors, the, the warm colors, tend to stand out in contrast to the blue colors. The blue sort of recedes into the background and the red just pops off the page. You notice that there's some dark blues in this figure and some lighter blues in the sky, but it's all variations on blue and the dominance of one kind of color, even in different shades and in different lightness and darkness, is what we call monochromaticism. But you wouldn't call this piece entirely monochromatic because of the strong reds and yellows that are present. And I think the red sun really draws your eye and with the title, The Paris Sun, you get a sense that Chagall is reflecting on some aspect of Paris or his feelings about the city in this image. And the sun is sort of a representation of that. That's how I would interpret it. But also the blue background with the, the sort of surreal images here, the, the, the heads floating in the background, it has a very dreamy nighttime quality. The, the blue color suggests dreaminess to me. When looking at this painting by Charles Birchfield called The First Hypoticas, one of the first things that strikes me is the incredible contrast and the extreme values of light and dark. So here in, this, in the distant part of the image, we have this incredible light flooding in. It has almost sort of a spiritual or hopeful quality, but in the foreground, it's, it's dark, it's gnarled, it's mysterious. There are these um, strong uh, shadows here in contrast uh, with the lighter part of the bark of the trees, and it has an almost sort of a haunting quality. So there's really an extreme contrast between dark and light values in this image, and I think it creates a sort of drama, a kind of emotional impact. In this painting by Picasso called The Dream, we have some very intense colors that contrast with each other. Um, we have this incredibly strong red and this green in the background, uh, these sort of oranges and reds in here, and yellows in her hair and in the chair and as well as the, the blue in her lap and her neck. And so these are, it, it's a really strong palette of colors, very intense, and that does suggest heightened emotion and energy. And it's interesting to note that her skin is very white. She herself is very pale and there isn't much color in her, but her surroundings are very vibrant. Um, and it suggests perhaps what, what's going on inside her mind, perhaps the feelings that the viewer might have about her. There's sort of a, a very kind of erotic quality here, and the red sort of suggests that eroticism. Uh, she's very beautiful and languid, but in a, in a kind of striking, vibrant, energy-filled way because of the vibrancy of the colors. Picasso also creates some strong contrasts in value. Uh, the white of her skin is highly contrasted with the, the dark black outlines in her face, her body, and the background, and this, this black area here. So again, a kind of boldness, a kind of striking drama to the use of light and dark. It's interesting to note here that the use of color isn't naturalistic. Uh, no one's skin is that white and no one's hair is that yellow, but he's creating a sort of feeling about the image, a kind of uh, the person who's being depicted is, is almost, it's their inner self more than their outward self, I think is what Picasso is trying to get at here. And so the use of color is an expressive device in and of itself. He's not merely trying to depict what's there, but, but trying to comment on it or to create an impression of it that's greater than a photographic impression. Some artists take color almost as the subject of their paintings, the primary tool by which they create form. And in this painting by Frank Stella, the colors seem almost to vibrate against each other, and the reds and, and oranges and yellows, the, the warm colors, pop out of the image, and the, uh, the browns and, and the blacks kind of recede and create this sense of three-dimensionality. So the color and the, the value of the color is in and of itself creating the composition. There's, there's this sort of geometric quality, but there's no outlines. The, the forms themselves, the shapes themselves are described by the color.